Hello, this is Roy Lilly. Coincidence. Coincidence. From a statistical perspective, coincidences are inevitable and often less remarkable than they may appear. Chance events with an underestimated probability. For example, the birthday paradox. The probability of two people having the same birthday already exceeds 50% in a group of only 23 people. Yeah, see, not a lot of people know that. Coincidence generally has a greater meaning for the person who observes the coincidence. Having said that, I will now shoot myself in the foot by revealing a meteor once fell to Earth and landed in France on the house of a family called Comet. <laughs> Coincidences, or as Carl Jung would describe it, synchronicity. Yesterday, there occurred a delicious coincidence. If it were a fruit, it would be a Mirabelle plum and couldn't be sweeter. It started in the Westminster Gasworks, where some people employed by us to do their best for us used a parliamentary opportunity to show us how really stupid they are, like we didn't know. Half the Tory party abstained or voted against the bill to introduce phased legislation to draw to an end the scourge of smoking by gradually upping the age limit to buy facts. Over time, it will mean smoking will go the way of the gas lamp and the knocker-upper. The numpties employed a spurious logic that at some time in the future a 50-year-old will be able to smoke, but not a 49-year-old or something, and that in some way is discriminatory and impinges human rights, the tooth fairy and damage from flying pigs. Others excuse themselves behind the smokescreen of a growth in black market fags. Now, if you don't know the damage that smoking does, you're reading the wrong stuff. Even the fag companies are moving away from fags, and I linked to a very interesting article uh, from the US in today's e-letter. Pundits say the real reason for the vote was to send a message to the Prime Minister that they don't want him as their leader. Frankly, who does? And I linked to some pretty <laughs> worrying, if you're Richie Sunak, um, you go stuff this morning is worth having a look at. Look, smoking does serious damage, costs people their lives, and at worst, their function at best. The cost in cash and opportunity to the NHS is astronomic. And at a time when everyone is wondering how the NHS is going to manage the future, anything that will reduce the number of customers might be regarded as very sensible, which brings me to the coincidence. On the very same day that the parliamentary game show was in progress, the Health Foundation produced 52 pages of how demand will send the NHS to hell in a handcart. <laughs> it's a, rock, a report called Health Inequalities in 2024, and you can uh, uh, click on the link in the e-letter this morning and read it for yourself. Coincidence, synchronicity, irony, sardonicism, take your pick. It's a compliment, complicated document because it's a complicated subject. It also makes an assertion that I'm not entirely in favour of. It asserts good health means more than longevity. And as someone who has exceeded their three score years and ten and is wondering what, <laughs> what the hell happens next, frankly, both mean a great deal to me. But the report is gathered by six young people, and I've learned the future is in the gift of the young. Picky, I know, but ageism is easy to see when your eyes are older. There's also a risk in trying to fathom the future. Medical advances are unpredictable and often pop up quicker than you think. The report admits in a like a, if a new something or other could change the life fortunes of someone living downtown in a deprived area it would have a bigger impact than in wealthy suburbia because downtown is where the big numbers really come from and i doubt that the super 6 won't have uh, would have, would have factored in the massive impact of yesterday's seminal decision in the house of commons however reluctantly it was arrived at the foundation's boffins have number crunched patient records along with the Cambridge Multimorbidity Score to create comparators. 
It's a small point that analysts will know about. The measurement of multimorbidity is highly variable and often poorly reported. So don't write to me. And I link to a bit of um, an analysis which you might be interested in this morning. So that said, look, this is an opus of a report, a must look. Make a cup of builders and turn to page three for an up sum and go from there. The report tells us what we know already is worse than what we already know. The poorer you are, the sicker you're likely to be. In the passing of time, everything will get worse. Inequality and time are the villains of this story. The report has a call to action, and I quote, it says the need for a cross-government approach to narrow health inequality, reduce economic activity, and ease pressure on overstretched health and care services. Correct. But, by coincidence, you've witnessed the shambles our politics is in. Sad to say, it ain't gonna happen. Thanks for listening. This has been Roy Lilly, and I hope we'll speak again soon. Bye-bye now.